Hey everyone, my name is Tristan and welcome to my workshop. A couple months ago I made this EVA foam Mandalorian helmet and I even put out templates so you guys can make it. And although I was happy with it at the time, I knew there was so many things about it I could improve. So after a lot of work, research and testing, I present to you my Mandalorian helmet version 2. I worked really hard on getting the shape as accurate as I could and on having as few visible seams as possible. If you want to make this helmet for yourself, the templates are available on my Etsy store for pretty cheap. I think it's a perfect project for beginners since it has just a few pieces, doesn't require many tools and it's highly customizable. So let's get right into the build. To keep this video from being too long, I already printed, cut out and transferred the templates on medium density EVA foam. The pieces you see on screen should be 6 to 8 mm thick and the center trim should be 5 to 6 mm thick. Remember to trace down the dotted and dashed lines on the pieces that require angle cuts. The ear pieces should be 10 to 12 mm thick and the upper ear pieces should be an additional 6 mm. I suggest also transferring all the details from the template pieces to your foam just like I did. The back vent frame should be 4 mm and the 6 vent pieces should be 2 mm. Now let's cut out our pieces. I'll use a box cutter for the straight cuts and a craft knife for the curved and angled cuts. I recommend cutting your big foam sheet into smaller, more manageable pieces. A couple tips to get clean cuts would be to sharpen your knife, go slow and keep it at a shallow angle so more of the blade contacts the foam. For rounded cuts, it's much easier to use a craft knife since the blade is thinner. Now it's time for the angled cuts. Keep the cutting guide near to make sure you cut the right angles. If you have a sharp blade, this process shouldn't be too difficult. Now let's cut out the center trim. I use a metal ruler to guide my cuts and keep them completely straight. When you're done, score the inner line with your knife. If you don't know, scoring is when you only cut about halfway through your foam, you can later heat up the cuts to make them open up and create cool panel lines. The vent pieces are pretty easy to cut out. I use the ruler for the vent frame piece so it's as straight as it can be. And for the little vents, keep your cuts precise so they're all the same size and shape. Now it's time for the ears. The 6mm upper pieces should be easy enough. The actual ear pieces can be separated into three pieces to make the next steps easier. If your rounded cuts aren't perfect, don't worry, we'll fix those later. Next, you'll have to cut out those two little details on the 12mm upper ear pieces. And now we have the base for our two Mando ear modules. It's time for some gluing. I'm using contact cement to connect the 12mm and 6mm upper ear pieces together. The goal when stacking those two pieces is to line up the edges as best as you can. Now let's refine those pieces. I'm using a rotary tool with a medium grit sanding bit. What you want to do here is add an angle all around the top of the piece. It's also the right time to clean up the edges. When I'm done, I like to use a stone bit to smooth out the rough texture from sanding. And that makes those pieces so clean. Now it's time for the lower pieces. Three of the edges should be cut at a very shallow angle to get the iconic look from Mando's helmet. Don't worry if your cuts look like crap, we'll refine them with the Dremel. I used the same sanding bit as earlier and shaped those angles to my liking. And of course, I cleaned them up with the stone bit. Since we have our Dremel out, let's add the angles that go all around the top trim. Now when doing this, be careful not to remove too much materials. The edges should still be a bit rounded. Then I clean up the surface and open the score lines with my heat gun. Let's get back to the ear modules. I used the template to cut out 4 more pieces. The two bottom ones are 5mm thick and the two top ones are 2mm thick. Before gluing everything together, it's a good idea to make sure it all fits and looks good. Now take out the contact cement and brush it on all your pieces. I think it's a good time to remind you that you should always wear a respirator when using contact cement and when sending your phone. Let's assemble our pieces. I really took my time on this step to make sure everything is straight. And now we have some almost finished ear pieces. To add the inset line that goes all around the top, I'll use a small spray paint cap cut in half. I start by heating up the piece and then press in the spray paint cap. 
Then I heat the piece so it gets back to its original shape. This gives me a good guide which I can use to score in the line. Now I heat up the piece once again. This opens my score line but it also lets me stretch the opening even more with a screwdriver. And I think that looks pretty good. Now all the pieces should be cut out and ready for assembly. But first I heat formed some of the pieces. The two cheek plates and the visor need a simple one way curve and the two dome pieces need a compound curve. I found the easiest way for me is to form the pieces around my knee. It's finally time for assembly. I start by gluing together the darts from both pieces. Because those are some pretty big darts, I recommend to glue the front first and work your way back. This ensures those two edges fit perfectly without even needing registration marks. Now let's take both sides together. I use the same technique, connecting each end first and working my way to the middle. This seam doesn't have to be perfect since the top trim will cover it later. Time for the visor. For this piece I connect the middle first and work my way to the sides. As you can see the visor gets glued on a 2mm step up from the dome piece. This is very important so make sure you do this on your helmet too. It's a pretty tricky piece to glue on so take it slow and you should be fine. Time for my favorite part, the cheek assembly. Start by connecting the top and bottom pieces together and then gluing the back piece on. You might have a small part sticking up, simply cut it off. And that cheek piece looks sharp. Once both cheek plates are assembled, you can glue them on the rest of the helmet. I start with the back, then I line up the front and connect the rest. Now the base for our helmet is finished. Let's assemble the back vent. I first stuck pieces of tape behind the frame. This lets me stick on the vent pieces super easily without even using glue. After messing around with the spacing, I got a result I was satisfied with. Then I stuck it on the helmet using contact cement. Now it's time for the ears. I line up the bottom, stick it down and then line up the front edge to the visor. After pressing down really hard so the glue sticks properly, the result looks pretty clean in my opinion. I added a 2mm trim over the visor. It's 5mm wide and goes from ear to ear. Now you can glue on the final piece which is the top trim. Make sure it's straight and centered because if it's not it's gonna be very noticeable. When you get to the back simply cut off the excess material and stick down the end. And this is the helmet completely assembled. I think it looks really clean and all the proportions and details seem pretty accurate. I love the fact that there's only one exposed seam on each side, which is less than most foam mando helmets out there. Now let's get into the prepping, painting and finishing of this helmet. The first step is of course to heat seal the foam using a heat gun. When that's done, it's time to level the seams. As you can see, I have some 80 grit and 150 grit sandpaper on a paint stick. This is something new I'm trying out. I take down most of the high spots with the 80 grit and move to the 150 grit to round off and clean up the surface. To remove the rough texture, I use a 320 grit sanding sponge. You could use the heat gun for this, but you risk opening up your seams. Now let's fill our seams. You can use any flexible filler like Quick Seal or Alex Fast Dry. I like the Liquitex modeling paste because it sends a little better. Make sure you don't apply too much or else your seams will just look lumpy even after sanding. Smoothing out the filler with water also helps to get rid of the lumpiness from the filler. Since most flexible fillers shrink when drying, I applied two coats of it. Once it's completely dry, you can go over it with 320 grit sandpaper to make it super smooth. At this point, I couldn't even feel the seam, which is great. Those seams look really clean. I also added filler in the cheek area to clean it up a bit. Now it's time for the scariest part of this build, cutting out the visor. I was super careful, had really sharp blades in my knives and went very slowly trying to keep a straight line. Not perfect, but good enough for me. I also added a couple braces inside the visor to help it keep its shape while painting. Now it's time for sealing and for the first time ever I decided to try out resin. For the rest of this build I kept my respirator on. The resin I'm using doesn't release any VOCs but I'm not taking any chances. I started by pouring the resin and the hardener in two different cups. I checked to make sure I had the same amount of each and then poured the hardener in the resin. Next I mixed it for around 2 minutes and poured it on a large surface so it cures slower. 
I just want to mention that I'm no expert with epoxy resin. This was my first time using this much resin and I was really stressed out about messing up my helmet. I carefully applied the resin using a sponge brush to minimize brush strokes. I had to say this process is much easier than I expected and it was pretty satisfying too. I have to mention that using resin is really not necessary for this project. You could totally apply 3 to 4 good coats of Mod Podge or Flex Bun and send down the brush strokes. That would give a very similar result to my helmet. I applied 3 coats of epoxy waiting around 15 hours between each one, and this is the result. It has a couple of drips but they're easy enough to just send down. I decided to send the helmet off camera since it's a really boring process and it took me a couple of hours. I think the result looks pretty good. Looking back at it, I should have sanded some spots a bit more, but I'm still satisfied with the result. It's almost time for painting, but first I mask off the inside of the visor and the bottom half of the helmet so no paint gets inside. My plan to get a super glossy black base was to start with a black primer plus paint and cover that with a gloss clear coat. Unfortunately, I went way too heavy with the black paint and got some drips. This was a pretty easy fix, I just used medium grit sandpaper to get rid of the drips and some 320 grit sandpaper to smooth out the surface. Then I simply sprayed my gloss clear coat over the helmet. After 3 coats I was really happy with the finish. I could very clearly see myself in the reflection which is amazing. Now let's chrome out this helmet. I used the ultimate mirror chrome from Spastix. It's the only high quality chrome paint that I could find here in Canada and it was really expensive. I sprayed it using my cheap airbrush which works surprisingly great. I applied three very light coats which worked amazingly. One hour after applying the chrome I carefully buffed it with a microfiber towel. That got rid of the dust from the overspray and brought back a lot of the shine. Even with my suboptimal surface finish the chrome looks super reflective. You almost can't see the seams which is amazing and I could still clearly see my reflection. Unfortunately, the chrome paint isn't durable and you have to seal it. The most inexpensive option is this pledge floor gloss. I cleaned up the helmet one more time and started spraying. You can't use regular clear coats since they will completely destroy the finish. Most clear coats that don't mess up chrome are super expensive. The pledge floor gloss is the only cheap clear coat I found that doesn't mess up the finish too much. I applied two very thin coats and when it was dry I carefully buffed the helmet to bring out the glossiness. The clear coat did dull out the chrome a little bit but I think it's actually more accurate this way. It's finally time to put in the visor and as you can see I removed the braces inside the visor. I used the visor template piece as a guide for the size but I added about a quarter inch all the way around. I traced the shape using a sharpie and used the ruler to keep my lines straight. The visor I used is just a tinted welding visor and it cuts easily using scissors. It does look green but once you glue it inside the helmet it should look black. To glue it in I just used sod glue which worked pretty well. I just love how clean the visor looks. It's finally time for my favorite part, weathering. I used brown and black oil paints since I found they give the most accurate look. The paint I used is not water mixable, but by applying it selectively and wiping off the excess with a paper towel, the weathering looked pretty realistic. And now you should have your own EVA foam Mandalorian helmet.
So this is the final result and this time I'm completely satisfied with how it looks. Of course instead of using epoxy to seal it you could use a PVA based sealant like Mod Podge or Flex Bond and get a similar result. As for the paint I would highly recommend using either Spastix, Allclad or Molotile Chrome. Those are the three most reflective paints available and it's what most people use for their Mando armors. You can also use graphite powder which is super reflective almost like a mirror but you have to seal it with fledged floor gloss or else you'll get graphite all over your hand when you handled your helmet. If those options are outside your budget, you can use spray paint. I tested out six different chrome paints and the best one is Duplicolor Chrome. It looks like this. Keep in mind that you cannot clear coat this paint. Also, I think it looks a bit too bright. If you're gonna use spray paint, I would recommend a metallic aluminum or titanium. Even better if you can find one that you can actually clear coat. A good gloss clear coat will help out with the reflectivity. And of course, no matter how you paint your helmet, a good glossy black base will help out with the shine. I really hope my advice helps you find the perfect paint for your helmet and I hope it turns out exactly how you want it to. Now this is the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more cool stuff like this. As I said earlier the templates to make this helmet are available on my Etsy store along with many others, the link will be in the description. Also if you want to see more of what I do, things that don't always make it into my videos, you can go follow me on Instagram, the link will also be in the description. Oh and by the way I'll be making the rest of the armor and I'll have templates available for the whole thing, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!